message tonight is equipping for signs and wonders. And so we're building the kingdom through signs and wonders operating through the believers. And so tonight we're talking about equipping. How do, how do we go about equipping people so that they operate in signs and wonders? And the terms uh, miracles and signs and wonders, they're all synonymous, all very, very similar and related. And, and uh, uh, that's just, they're just different words for miracles. Uh, so that's in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, there's a little bit of distinction. Signs uh, are things that point somewhere. I can go out uh, uh, here from uh, this town and we'll get on a road and it'll say Atlanta. This is the way to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So signs point you somewhere and where they point you is to the Lord Amen. and Amen. Uh, his nature and to his power, and to what he's doing. And the wonders are a little different than that. <clears throat> they inspire us to worship the Lord. Mm. And, uh, you know, Jesus talked, to, uh, gave us a list of signs. And so we'll just uh, mention a few verses here in Mark 16. He said, these signs will follow believers. It'll be such things as casting out demons, healing the sick by laying on their hands, and uh, speaking with new tongues. And so those, uh, Jesus said, these are signs. And, uh, and so those, some of those same uh, things are listed in 1 Corinthians 14 as the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, and there's tongues and interpretation of tongues and healing and miracles and faith and, and uh, words of wisdom and knowledge and prophecy. discerning of spirits and prophecy. So uh, these are all then are the supernatural signs and wonders. <clears throat> now, there are definitely some misunderstanding about these things. So first of all, I'm going to just talk a little bit about signs and wonders and try to clarify uh, some things from the scriptures. And then we'll talk more about the equipping. So first we'll just, uh, I've listed some signs and wonders. I, I think about wonders, uh, uh, some of the things that Sherry and I see, we, we've seen many miracles all, all the time are happening uh, in us, through us, around us. And we're so very uh, excited about that. And we're so thrilled to be able to share some of these things. Today, or not, it's not really about uh, listing a bunch of them or, or spending a lot of uh, energy on the individual, but just we're going to be talking about from a very general perspective, because what I really want to go is to look at how are we going to be equipped to do these things. Uh, obviously, we, we've seen uh, people raised from the dead. We've uh, seen people healed, delivered uh, from uh, demons, uh, set free in so many different ways. Uh, some wonders that, that I think about uh, is the gold dust. And uh, we yeah. were in a ministry... Uh, about to minister at a, a congregation. Uh, this has been uh, maybe a few years ago and Sherry told the pastor, uh, there's gonna be gold dust here. Well, that's supernatural. That's a wonder. Okay, so what's a wonder? Well, it, it inspires you Amen. to just be excited about the Lord and to worship him. And, uh, and finish the story. And, and sure enough, when we came to lunch uh, after, after that service, uh, there was the associate pastor with us. He had his iPad, and there was a, a snow, a gold, gold place, dust, all over gold it. dust on it. But we've seen so much gold dust that it was just all over people. Uh, one service that I'm thinking about, uh, there was so many, uh, so much gold dust that afterwards they had these big brooms, brooms going, and sweeping, going, going through the building, sweeping up the gold, gold dust. dust. And uh, we have a friend that has a. Uh, a flake of gold dust uh, that she's had for decades. And, and so it, it's real. It, it lasts. And I, I don't understand it, but that's a wonder. That's what a wonder mm -hmm. is. Talk about gold. Jesus, uh, what a wonder you are. What a wonder he is. <laughs> Praise God. So there are wonders. There are signs that point us to the nature and mm -hmm. character and uh, what God is doing just to the, just point us to God. And, and, and if we see these and we see them by faith, see it, it is our faith that connects the events. And so when things are happening like that, you see wonders or you see signs, you need to be pointing, looking at God, focusing on God. 
Uh, whatever you do, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. This Amen. is all about Jesus. Uh, Jesus, the center of my, yes. of my world. Wow. What a, what a way to start. With yes, that song. Michelle, Michelle, thank you. you. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, I, but there are some misconceptions about signs and wonders. And uh, I want to clear up a couple of those and we'll look at some things Jesus said. And uh, the reason they get uh, uh, misunderstood is that people try to take things out of context. And so I want to look at two passages that Jesus talked about signs and wonders. And the first one is Matthew 7. Uh, verses 21 through 23, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read this, and we're going to find really two important things that relate to signs and wonders, and uh, I, I can't wait to tell you, so I'm just going to say it to begin with. One is obedience, <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah, and the other one is being joined to Jesus Christ. Woo! So read these amen. three verses, amen. Sherry, amen. Matthew 7. Hallelujah. This is out of the Passion Translation. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the heaven's kingdom. It is only those who persist in doing the will of my heavenly father. Okay, so let's just pause here for a minute. Let me say something about, well, the kingdom. What is the kingdom? It's the realm of the Holy Spirit because it, it is that place where signs and wonders happen, where the power of the Holy Spirit uh, is manifest. That's what the kingdom is. The kingdom is not food and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it is the supernatural realm of the Holy Spirit. And, and you can only enter that realm with signs and wonders Ooh, where they're going to be hallelujah. flowing through you with obedience to the Father. Oh, hallelujah. Don't, don't think, oh, I just want the signs and wonders. I don't want the Father. Forget it. You got to be obedient. That's what he's saying here. You got to mm -hmm. be obedient mm -hmm. to the Father's will. Mm -hmm. Okay, read, read these next verse verses. Verse 22 and 23. On the day of judgment, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, don't you remember <clears throat> us? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons and do miracles in your name? But I will say unto them, well, listen to this. Go away from me, you lawless rebels. I've never been joined to you. Oh, you can see why I picked that particular wow, translation. Wow, wow. You know, a lot of the translations say, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, but knowing in the Bible is a little different than knowing in the natural. Knowing in the Bible, when it talks about that. You know, Adam knew mm -hmm. Eve and they had a child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's intimacy. Mm -hmm. And he said, you, you haven't been joined wow, to me. Wow, wow, wow. Now we could easily say, well, how could they do that? Well, I don't know how they could do it without being joined to him, without being obedient to the Father. But the point is, they could do it in the name of Jesus. And so if people who are not obedient to the Father and not joined to Jesus, not knowing him intimately, mm -hmm. they can still do signs and wonders. Surely you and I can do signs and wonders Hallelujah. Hallelujah. because we love him. We're connected with him. him. We're joined to him and that word joined is so important to me and i believe it should be to all of us we need to be joined to him not just have our name on a roll someplace or be a member of some organization jerry well i'd like to just continue with that thought about being uh, about knowing him and being joined to him the next word that comes up in my spirit man is conception and that is that we uh we receive uh from him and then we conceive and we conceive the uh jesus christ and he begins to grow in us and then he's manifested and then he's birthed and so that word conception is is also very important there okay so hey we need to be joined uh, not only to jesus but also to his body and that's what we're here about tonight, yeah, yeah. functioning uh, in the body of Christ. Amen, amen. And uh, let's go on and read this uh, 23rd verse from another translation called mm -hmm. the, message. the Message. There's a really important point I want to make here. Let's read this here. These are still about the people who were doing signs in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was, of course, by that name that they were able to do it because they weren't joined to him. They weren't obedient to the Father's will. But read what this verse says. And do you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. 
All you did was use me to uh -oh. make yourself important. Uh oh, that's you the don't price. impress me one bit. You're out of here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he said, get away. Wow. From oh, good. Depart from me. Woo! You just were using me. This is Jesus' oh, word. Oh, dear Jesus. You were just using me to make yourself look important. See, there's a we're we're going to continue uh, yeah, with that with, thought with again that thought, yeah. uh, later in, in this message because that's the way a lot of people uh, operate. They're just using Jesus because they want to be important. They want to look important to, to other people. Now, there's another passage. We're not going to read it, but I'm just going to tell you quickly, and it's Matthew 12 because this is also taken out of context often. And uh, in Matthew 12, there are two healings. Jesus heals a man with a withered hand, and then he heals a man who was blind and unable to speak. Okay, so he did signs and wonders right there in that passage. Now, it made the Pharisees angry, and they were so angry, they went out and they conspired to destroy him. And then... Uh, they came back to him and said, show us a sign. So this is their way of destroying him. They're going to, they're laying a trap so that they can destroy him. He said, they say, show us a sign. Well, he just did two signs. He healed a man with a withered hand. He healed a, a man who was blind and unable to speak. Okay, so he did two signs, but those signs were for redemptive purposes. It took people who had problems and it brought them back to God's original plan for both of them. Okay, so that's the redemptive part of signs and wonders. But they're wanting a different kind of sign. They're wanting something to make them look like they're important, to be uh, in, con in control of Jesus and ordering signs when they want signs to destroy him. Oh, listen to me. And so people say, well, we shouldn't ask for signs and wonders. Well, just two people just got healed. And so don't tell me, don't tell me we shouldn't ask for signs. Man, if, you're, if you need healing, go to Jesus. Amen. He, he's Hallelujah. the one who heals. But, but they were trying to use uh, signs that that was their plan to destroy him. Now, he said, you'll only see these two signs. One is the sign of Jonah, and the other side is the sign of the Queen of the South. Now, Jonah... And to understand, this was about Jonah who went to Nineveh and preached, oh, hallelujah, uh, pre preached repentance. And so the people repented and there were changes and there were, there were signs and wonders following the preaching of the word. That's the first thing. The second, but there's a different way of doing things, and that's with the wisdom. See, uh, the queen of the south came to Solomon seeking wisdom. And so there are also signs and wonders following wisdom Hallelujah. so there should be signs and wonders following both of these things preaching and wisdom and so as you operate in life see some of you may never be behind a pulpit preaching mm -hmm. that kind of a message mm -hmm. but every one of us can perform signs and wonders because there's a second kind of sign that jesus talks about in that passage and that is just going out and doing day-to-day -day operations, whatever you are, do, living your life on a daily basis and with wisdom, bringing forth signs and wonders to people Hallelujah. that you encounter. That's the, two, that's the two ways to bring it forth. Mm -hmm. We can preach it and, and there'll be signs and wonders following the preaching of faith and the word of God. And there, if you operate in wisdom, uh, you there will be, signs and wonders following you. See, this message is about how to be equipped to operate in signs and wonders. And I, I want you to know that it's not everybody is going to do exactly the same way. Everybody is not going to preach behind a, a pulpit. pulpit. And, and, and But that does not rule you out. You still have the opportunity to go through life and operating in God's wisdom and bringing forth oh. Signs and wonders wherever you go. Hallelujah. Now, here is the example of that, and it's a man called Philip. Philip, first of all, we just know him as a deacon, uh, but he's there with the apostles. The apostles, what did they do? They equip him for signs and wonders. Amen. Then in Amen. Acts chapter 8, he goes down to Samaria. Samaria, and he preaches. I'll just have sure you read a few verses about this. I love two Philip. ways. Amen. Two ways we're going to see how Philip operated in signs and wonders. Let's 
Read these. And this verses. is Acts 8, 4 through 8. Therefore, those who had been scattered went through places preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming the Christ to them. The crowds were paying attention with one mind to what was being said by Philip as they heard and saw the signs which he was performing. He preached. Now there's signs. Yes, amen. Okay. For in the case of many who had unclean spirits, they were coming out of them, shouting with a loud voice. Heard that before. And many who had been paralyzed or limped on crutches were healed. So there was much rejoicing in that city. Okay. Hallelujah. So here is one of those avenues by which we get signs and wonders, and one is preaching. And Philip was equipped by the apostles to do both. So mm -hmm. here he was preaching the gospel. We see people healed, delivered, uh, demons cast out. Those are signs that follow the preaching. And then uh, let's go to later on when he's just walking down the road. Uh, this is still Philip, still mm -hmm. in Acts chapter 8. Read this part of it. This is the verses 27 through 29. But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Get ready and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. Just be walking on the road. We're on your road of life, on your journey of life. Just be walking along and then listen. And this is a desert road. So he got ready and went. And there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethi Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasure. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot and was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go up and join yourself to that chariot. Hallelujah. Now we know the rest of the story. He gets up there and says, uh, oh, what are you doing? And he says, I'm reading this, but I don't understand it. So Philip explained it. It was all about Jesus. And so the Philip said, well, here's water. What's going to hinder me from being baptized. So they got out. They, uh, he was baptized. He baptized him there in the water and then the spirit whoo, caught him away. Hallelujah. Right, Translated him. Well, this reminds me uh, when he said, join yourself to that chariot. Uh, we've got uh, a, um, a very powerful woman sitting with us uh, that Sister Becky and I, uh, it was around midnight, uh, went up to a Waffle House, and when I walked in the door, 40 years ago, 40 years ago, isn't that right, Miss Judy? Hallelujah. And, uh, and when I walked in that Waffle House door, uh, the Lord said to me, join yourself to that booth. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. And so that's where Becky and I went. We went to that booth where Miss Judy Bowers was sitting there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then what Hallelujah. And then the, the Lord did mighty things with her uh, at 3 a.m. that morning. And uh, and we thank the Lord for her and for the ministry uh, that the Lord has given to her, both not only with children, but with, with adults, with recovery homes. And we just give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. 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 So just, the same process is going on. You can preach signs and wonders. Amen. Amen. You can just go through life. Hallelujah. Sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And when he tells you to do something, you do it. It may seem silly. Join yourself to his chariot. Join, Join yourself, yourself to, to the booth. To the booth. It may, but you know, who knows? Just expect. Be expecting. Yeah, be expecting. Signs That's it. and wonders. Hallelujah. 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 So this has just been an introduction to this session <laughs> uh, because that's about signs and wonders. But what I'm really talking about tonight is equipping. And so we have to go to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. And, and just 12 summarize, Jesus gives some ministries, some ministers, some people, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. So he gives these ministers to equip. So read um, ne the next verse here, if you would, please. For the verse. equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. So this is the core verse for this whole series. We, uh, The ministers are given to equip the saints so the saints can do the work. Hallelujah. This is not about the minister standing up front and doing everything mm, himself. Mm, no, this is about mm. them equipping 
equipping Hallelujah. the saints. Now, that's what we're doing here. This is not a congregation. This is not a local, a, a local congregation. God told us not to raise up a local congregation. This is a, a place where we equip people. We're in the area of kingdom leadership. Amen. And, and so we have a very, uh, the Lord has given us a very unique f function and mission uh, in this group. And, and he keeps adding to it as, as he will. Amen. Amen. Uh, but, but what I want you to know is there are basically two kinds of ministries in the body of Christ. And the first one, uh, and the one that's most popular, the one that we all have all seen the most are those who are building their own ministry, not equipping the saints. But what he's told us to do is equip the saints. So I want us to build uh, what I call a, a straw man, those who are equipping uh, who are building their own ministry uh, because of lots and lots of congregations are like that. Well, they don't equip the saints. Why is that? Because they're trying to build a big ministry and they're trying to look good. And sometimes operating in the gifts may look a little messy, may be a little messy. And so they don't have time for any mess. Yeah. Uh, they, they, everything has to go off uh-huh, on perfect, schedule. On schedule, perfect. And and so there's just no room for the Holy Spirit in that kind of a ministry. They want to get bigger and bigger, and they want to look good, and they want to, they want to impress people. You, you know, uh, but Jesus said, we read that earlier. Oh, wow. You, you're just using me. This is Jesus' words. You're just using me so that you can look important. Oh, that's why those, oh, I, I'm using this as a straw man. I'm not saying this is your congregation. I'm saying this is a straw man. In other words, a lot of people have parts of this and they're building their own ministry and they don't have time to equip people to do signs and wonders because they really don't want signs and wonders in their midst because they have everything scheduled. They have an agenda and things have to, <laughs> they have to bring in all the people. They have to get there, let's say about 11 o'clock and then they give them uh, a few songs, a few fast songs, a few slow songs, a, a, a little message with three points and, and then uh, an altar call and then they have to get them out by, so they can be at their restaurant, favorite restaurant on Sunday by 12 o'clock. This is just a straw man. <laughs> yeah, maybe you haven't seen it. I've seen lots of them. I'll pray like this. Lots of them. And, and so there's no room for them to equip. There's no mm -hmm. room for them to let people a apply the gifts of, or operate in the gifts of the Spirit in those kinds of services. They're all highly structured. I believe the Bible calls it a form of godliness, uh, but denying, denying the, the power, power thereof. thereof or denying the access of the Holy Spirit into those uh, situations and into those services. It's a terrible situation. And, and so what I've seen in those kinds of ministries, they don't focus on the Matthew 16 uh, signs that Jesus talked about, casting out yeah, Mark demons, 16. Uh, Mark 16, casting out demons and uh, healing the sick and uh, speaking in new tongues. And they don't use uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12 that, that lists the gifts of the Spirit. They don't use those signs and wonders. They're not equipping people for that. They prefer Romans 12. And Romans 12, uh, it, it talks about people that they can use in their ministry, yes. uh, like teachers and servants and ushers mm -hmm. and all of these other kinds of gifts. They're, they're not the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're, they're gifts that people have the, uh, that, uh, and, and so that they can utilize that they can utilize in their building program. And so I'll just have Sherry read these. This is Romans 12, six through eight. However, since we have gifts that differ, According to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them properly. If prophecy, then prophesy according to your faith. If service, in the act of serving, are the one who teaches, in the act of teaching, are the one who exhorts, in the work of exhortation, the one who gives, give generously, the one who is in leadership, with diligence, the one who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Okay, so they're going to really emphasize. I'm talking about those ministries that are building their own ministry, trying to look good, to yeah. stay on schedule, get you out 
by noon so you can be at your favorite restaurant. They're, they're going to emphasize these gifts because they can place them there in their ministry someplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, th then they're denying the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the, that's the real critical movement thing. Movement of the Holy and, Spirit. And so that, that moves us to, to this group and what we're doing. And what we're teaching uh, uh, some, uh, giving us a, a, a something to target and, and to help us move in kingdom uh, leadership and then now in the gifts, to move in the gifts. And, and so we want to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 14, and there's a couple of verses here. I want you to see that all the gifts are not for all the people, but there are spe specific gifts for specific purposes. And so we'll read that first, and then mm -hmm. we'll see how uh, assemblies are supposed to operate. Uh, let's read these two verses here. Okay, please. 1 Corinthians 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 22 and verse 26. So then tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but for our unbelievers. But prophecy is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. See, you, you have to know what you're doing and, and you have to know by who you're dealing with and by the spirit of God, what is needed in that situation. I mean, you can't I mean. just do these uh, blanket uh, things and think everything is going to work out exactly the way you want it to work out. That you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. See, all the gifts, and, and we read this in, uh, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, they all operate by the Holy Spirit. And uh, th that's important for us to remember that. Okay, Sherry, read this. Verse 26, first. when you assemble or gather together, each one has a psalm, each one has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has the interpretation. All things are to be done for the building up or the edification of the body. See, this all relates to what we're doing here. I, I do a little teaching uh, and then I open it up so that we, you can do these things that this verse just talks about. Uh, we can, each one may have a song. Oh, Michelle yeah, sang amen. a beautiful song amen. a moment ago. Another person will have a revelation, a prophecy, different things. So this is uh, doing uh, the gifts. This is operating oh, in the gifts. Hallelujah. Of course, that's by the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit shows you. Now, this is not about you just coming up with something you've already taught or, or, or something uh, uh, that's already... Uh, past years ago or you'd heard a long time. This is about what the Holy Spirit is doing today in our midst. It's learning how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit so that he can move through amen, you. Amen. See, that's what Rome, Romans 15, 19 talks about. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul said, uh, it's by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. He's operating through me. He's bringing uh, forth signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Signs and wonders. Uh, through me. See, see the Holy, he said, the power of the Holy Spirit is moving through me, bringing forth signs and wonders to touch the hearts of the people, to change unbelievers to believers. Hallelujah. 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 That's what, that's the way it operates. It's through the Holy Spirit coming upon you, through you, in you, and, and, and the signs and wonders coming out of you because you're bringing forth the word, because you're a believer, because signs and wonders follow believers. Amen. Okay. And Amen. so we operate together. It's not all about one person uh, doing everything or having a, an agenda. We don't have that kind of agenda or schedule. And then there's another verse that goes right along with this. And this is Colossians 3.16. Now let's share And I'm bringing this to conclusion. Let the word of God richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, with hymns, with spiritual songs, singing with thanks, thankfulness in your hearts to God. See, what we're doing here, we're, we're trying to do what the Word of God says, that, that we're working one to, with another. Yes. That we're yes. preferring one another. another hallelujah. We're, we're letting people have room to operate in the gifts to experience Amen. Amen. the Holy Spirit moving through them and the signs and wonders coming out. And those signs and wonders may come out in many different ways. They may come out in a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, uh, healings, lots of different ways. Um, that's what this is about. And that's really a unique thing about 
these kingdom leadership training sessions that that we want people here to be active uh, active participants in these it's not just about um, me cutting off your head the top of your head and pouring in knowledge about it right this is a place where it's safe for us to operate and hallelujah in the gifts of the spirit with signs and, and wonders. wonders so thank hallelujah, you very much for hallelujah, being here tonight hallelujah, hallelujah. i want to hear uh, from you yes. about what your thoughts are i'm Amen. going to turn it over to sherry hallelujah i just want you to know that healing is already throwing flowing uh through this group it started with me about an hour ago my hands uh, uh got very very hot and and the lord said there's going to be uh healings uh tonight and so i'm going to to so i can view your faces and 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 see the whole gallery here hallelujah uh we have such wonderful wonderful group uh but the healing is already flowing it's already flowing by the spirit of god now that is one of the the gifts of the spirit hallelujah and so as you uh as you uh, michelle and matthew it's so great to see you guys here praise the name and steve pierce praise the name of jesus thank you lord thank you lord and so if you if you need healing in your body right now uh the lord is the, the lord is healing knees the lord is healing uh feet uh, some of you've been having difficulty with your feet uh the lord is healing uh necks the lord is healing broken bones where you've broken something in the past and arthritis is trying to set up in that bone structure uh i, I see someone's elbow i see uh a knee that's that way uh the lord is healing so receive your healing right now